Refurbishing a vintage model steamboat. This is part four. The steam engine piping layout and fitting the displacement lubricator. The first thing I had to do was change the angle of the superheater inlet and outlet because it was fouling the reversing lever. The reversing lever, if you remember from the last episode, now has an extension arm on it for radio control. In this position, nothing's fouling now. I just had to alter the pipe arrangement slightly. I've just silver soldered unions onto a piece of pipe that I bent to shape. There needs to be a gap between the two pipe unions to take the T piece that I'm about to make. Normally I would use a commercial 5 16ths by 32 T piece, but I've run out of those, and I thought also it would be good for the video to show how I make one. And the first thing to do is to select a piece of brass. This is 3 8 of an inch in diameter, and the main piece needs to be 1.5 inches long. The other piece needs to be about an inch. And then it's over to the lathe for a bit of metal removal. The first thing I'm doing is parting off the pieces of brass that I need for the job. And so I set the parting tool to cut one piece of brass one and a half inches long and another piece of brass approximately one inch. You will notice that I'm not parting off all the way through and the reason for this is I do not want the bit to drop off into the tray where when I pick it up I will get lots of pieces of brass stuck in my fingers. These little golden pieces of brass are really sharp and they can be surprisingly painful when you get the pieces stuck in your fingers. What I'm doing now is turning this piece down to 5 sixteenths of an inch. I'm checking it frequently with the micrometer. I'm checking it a little too frequently, that's for the purposes of the video. And you notice I do stop the lathe before I apply the micrometer. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the gentleman who wrote in and said did I realise that the eccentric was a bit loose on the Stuart double ten. Yes I too noticed it on the video, I never noticed it when I just watched the engine running. Video is quite a good medium for checking how things are working. The rest of the machining operation is very simple. Here I'm using a centre drill to make a deep centre hole which will hold the cone of the union and then I'm going to thread the outer part 5 sixteenths of an inch by 32 threads per inch. But of course, not forgetting to first drill a hole all the way through. I've actually done this before. I've made fittings and thought, oh no, I haven't drilled the hole. So I always make sure that I drill the hole all the way through the component first. Normally it's not too much of a problem, but with making a video at the same time, and I'm actually doing the job as a video, it, it's not one of these that I prepared earlier. This is live. So I will forget things. Sometimes I even forget to press record on the camera. Right, this is a tailstock die holder and I'm cutting the thread. This is far too fast and yes, I'm aware of that as well. I would normally do this by hand and actually physically turn the tailstock die holder. But if I do that, all you will see is my two large hands, which is not good for a video. And while I've been telling you this bit, I've turned around the piece of work in the chuck and I'm now doing the other end. By the magic of video, I don't have to show my hands changing the part. I could really cheat on this, but I do not. This is the piece turned around in the chuck and I'm doing the machining operation all again at the other end. So I'll just talk about something different in the way of an interlude. Do you have trouble with mice in your house? We used to do, but then we got a cat and they all sort of disappeared. But in the short period before we got the cat, we did have some mice in the house. So I bought some humane traps. I never liked the idea of the spring-loaded ones that smash them to bits as they go for the piece of cheese on the spike. So I get humane traps, and I put a cornflake in the humane traps, and sure enough, the next morning, there's a noise from the trap and there's a mouse in there. So then I take the humane trap outside and hit it smartly with a sledgehammer. Because I do feel it's a good thing to be considerate and always give the rodent a sporting chance. Well, all good things must come to an end. And what you see me doing here is threading the other side of the T-piece tube. 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch once again, exactly the same as the other side. And now I'm working on a different piece of brass. I know it looks like the same piece of brass, but this is not the same piece of brass. I'm drilling a hole 7 30 seconds of an inch through this. And what I'm going to do then is thread it using a tap which is a quarter inch by 32 threads per inch. And this will cut a thread that is the same as the one on a Stuart displacement lubricator. So the displacement lubricator will screw into the end of this. But before I can finish it, I have to make the T-piece. As you can see, I have it in the machine vise, this short stub of brass with the thread down the middle that I've just cut. 
and I'm using a 3 8 of an inch diameter milling cutter. This is a slot drill, which is a little bit coarse, but it does the job. This will machine this part so that it sits neatly on the 3 8 of an inch diameter main body of the T-piece. Then all I have to do is silver solder the parts together, and it looks like this. Not forgetting, of course, I actually forgot to video this bit, I did drill down through into the main body of the T-piece. If you don't drill down into the main longitudinal hole in the piece, then the displacement lubricator will be unable to supply oil to the engine. As I mentioned earlier on in this episode, I would normally use a commercial fitting for this, and really speaking, if you look at the time it's taken, and the cost of the silver solder, it would have been cheaper to do so, because they're not expensive. But this looks okay, it's a nice long extension, and it gets the lubricator away from the heat source, and it also makes it possible to conveniently get your hand in and a cloth underneath the lubricator when draining it, without running the risk of burning your hand on the boiler or the chimney flue. I will of course be fitting an exhaust condenser or oil trap to this boat, because it's not a good policy to deposit small globules of oil all over the water that you're sailing the boat on. Ideally the condenser needs to be on the centre line of the boat, over to one side would mean that the boat would list as the condenser filled up with water. That's it for now, thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.